Imagine a great king, dressed in royal robes. If this king were walking along the beach and he saw his child drowning in the water, wouldn't he immediately dive in to save his child? Would his royal robes matter to him? No, all that would matter to him at that moment would be the child he loves. If that's how great human love is, how much greater do you think God's love is? In the New Testament, Christians are commanded to be humble. But the example we're given of true humility is of a great king laying aside his glory, diving into the world to save his children. In Philippians we read, In your relationships with one another have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This passage, like the rest of the New Testament and even the Old Testament, describes Jesus as God, and yet draws a distinction between Jesus and the Father which is why the Bible can only be understood in light of the doctrine of the Trinity, the doctrine that God is one in essence and yet exists eternally as three divine persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In John 6.38, Jesus, the divine Son, tells his followers that he came down from heaven. But why would he come down here? Where was the Son going when he left heaven and came to earth as Jesus of Nazareth? Was he going to Bethlehem? Was he going to the cross? Was he going to the tomb? Was he going full circle, leaving heaven only to return there later? Though Jesus went to all of these places, he had a particular destination in mind. He tells us exactly where he was going in the last two verses of John 17, where he says to the Father, Righteous Father, Though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them, and will continue to make you known, in order that the love you have for me may be in them, and that I myself may be in them, and that I myself may be in them. In who? In us. We were Jesus' destination when he left heaven. In 1 Corinthians 6.19, the Apostle Paul says, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you? Jesus died on the cross to cleanse new temples for God's glory. And because Jesus has a divine nature, he's the only man in history who could take the full wrath of God and then get up and walk away at his resurrection. We were created to be the walking, talking, living, breathing temples of our Creator. But we sinned and fell short of the glory of God. No matter how wonderful we think we are, nothing we could ever do would make us good enough to stand before God. If we're going to dwell in the presence of God and have God's presence within us, we need a righteousness that comes from God, not from ourselves. Because all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. The word gospel means good news. The good news is that God did something for us that we could never do for ourselves. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. We can now be the holy temples we were created to be because we have the righteousness of Christ. Since there is nothing we can do to earn this righteousness, 
we receive it by believing what God has told us. For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. So confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, and you will be saved. We were all drowning in our sins, my friends. In fact, we had already drowned. The King of all kings dove in to save us. And that's the gospel.